And I think that the the data for poor sleep and insulin resistance are actually quite strong. I, um, I, I think we've spoken about this on several podcasts, but you know, the, the even short-term bouts of sleep deprivation, like two weeks of four hours of sleep deprivation per night, result in about a fifty percent reduction in glucose disposal, which of course would result in hyperglycemia. You also have that whatever you call it, sleep deprivation. You're tired and fatigued, and then you look at you know, what are your exercise habits? What is your dietary approach? What is your stress level? And I imagine that it's probably harder to get in that, that workout, at least, you know, even if you do get into the gym, I wonder if it's at the same intensity that you would normally do. And I was like, if I were to, you know, make a mistake and go off of it, you know, N equals one, but I was highly, highly more likely to, you know, dig into the Hagen dazs whatever the case is, if I did, if I, if I was sleep deprived. And probably more likely to be stressed out too as well without the sleep. So I think a lot of them kind of feed into each other.